Welcome everyone to Epic Encounters. I hope you enjoy this week's message. I'm confident that the message from this series will meet you exactly where you are. Stay tuned for an epic journey. I was listening to uh, the Bible being read to me and God gave me this message. So I looked it up and I researched it and then I started writing down and I kept writing down and I kept writing down. I was like, okay, <laughs> all right. So if you would turn with me to Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. And we're going to start reading at verse 34. When you got it, it's also up here. On when you got it, say, I got it. Amen. We're going to read. And when they were gone over, they came into the land of Gennesaret. And when the men of that place had knowledge of him, they sent out into all the country around about and brought unto him all that were diseased and besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. And God gave me a title, the faith of Gennesaret. When the people who heard he had come into their city, what did they do? They went out. They said, he has come. And they knew who he was. And they went out and brought all that were diseased, all that were sick, all that were lame, all that were halt, all that were hurting. And what did they say to Jesus? Did they say, Lord, lay your hand on me? Or Lord, speak into my life? No. They said, Lord, can we just touch the hem of your garment? Can we just press on up and touch just the hem of your garment? They didn't ask Jesus to speak into their lives. They didn't expect something big and miraculous and, and wonderful coming out of his mouth. They didn't expect Jesus to lay hands on them or put mud on their eyes or do any of the things that he did with others. All they expected of him was for him to allow them to touch just the hem of his garment. And what did the Bible say? All, not part, not just one, but all that touched the hem. All that touched the hem were healed. What does it take for us today to touch the hem of his garment? What does it take? There are two ways to press through and touch the hem of his garment. Two ways that I know of. Two ways that I've done it. Two ways that I see in the word. One is prayer. And the other is worship. One is prayer. And the other is worship. Miracles happen when we push through to touch the hem of his garment. Miracles happen when we push through in prayer. Miracles happen when we push past our self-doubt. Miracles happen when we push past our past failures. Miracles happen when we push past any fear we may have. Miracles happen when we push past the pride that's in ourselves. Miracles happen when we push past the naysayers. Miracles happen when we push past the mockers. Miracles happen when we push past our neighbors. Miracles happen when we push past our brothers and sisters. Miracles happen when we push past our family members. All we need to do is push past and touch the hem of his garment. Touch it in prayer. Touch it in worship. 
One thing I like about Sister Letty, I'm going to call you out, Sister Letty, is when she prays, when she worships, she doesn't care who is around her. She pushes through. And I appreciate that of you, Sister Letty. You don't care what's going on around you. You just push through to Jesus and you get your touch. You get that touch. Don't stop. You get that touch. Amen. Hallelujah. We tell ourselves, I am going to be healed. Then we push through and touch the hem of his garment. We tell ourselves, I am going to get that much needed blessing. And then we push through in worship. We push through in prayer. And we touch the hem of his garment. We tell ourselves, I am going to receive my father's promises. And then we push through. What does it take to be heard of our Father? What does it take besides prayer, besides verbal things that come out? What does it take? It takes sacrifice. It takes self-sacrifice. It takes selflessness. It takes sacrifice of our own pride. It takes sacrifice of our own fear. It takes sacrifice of our own doubt. It takes sacrifice of our own worry. It takes sacrifice of everything that may hinder us. And we have to push through and touch the hem of his garment. When the worship and praise is up there, when the worshiper is worshiping, when the opportunity arises and you have a need in your life, push through and worship. Push through and raise your hands. Push through and sing with all your heart. God will bless. When you're in the altar and praying, before service when you're praying, when you're praying at your altar at home, when you're praying in your car going to work, push through and get what you need. We do all things in order, though. When the preacher's up there preaching, we don't push through and interrupt the message. But we do push through at home. We do do push through before service. We just do push through at the altar call for prayer. We do push through when we hear his call. When he calls us, say, pray for this person. This person needs you to touch them. We push through and we do it. Hallelujah. When we worship. I worship in my car. I don't know about y'all, but... I, t- I crank up the tunes. I got a long way to go from Imperial Beach to Point Loma. Well, when I'm allowed to from Imperial Beach to downtown San Diego, that is. After that, I still crank up the tunes and I worship and I pray and I worship God. When you're at home, when you're by yourself, when you're cranking up the music, when you're worshiping God, push through and get what you need. When you're happy, when you're sad, when you're sick, when you're under attack, when you hear his call, or just during the worship service, push through. Don't give up. Don't let the person beside you, behind you, ahead of you, the naysayers, the mockers, the complainers, don't let them get in your way. If you want something from God, push through. Push through. These people of Gennesaret, they, were, he brought, they brought them all, all that were sick. Don't you think there's but only one Jesus? They had to push through to get their healing. They had to push through to touch that hymn. And that's all they needed to do is touch the hymn. So they did. And they were all healed. They were all blessed. They were all touched. When the altar call comes, there is a lot of altar up here to be filled. There's a lot of chairs up here to be, to, to be knelt at. We don't have to have Brother Ray or myself or Brother Shante or Sister Earlene pray for you. You can get up and say, I'm going to push through anyway. I know there's a chair up there. I know there's an altar up there. I'm going to kneel down before it and I'm going to get what I need. I'm going to get what I need. I'm going to get what God promised me. I'm going to get what is in my, what is promised me as a child of the king. I'm going to get it. 
and we push through. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We need to change our outlook on faith, people. Faith comes from what? Hearing. And hearing from what? The Word of God. Well, the Word of God tells us this one thing. Just touch the hem of his garment. When you're raising your hands and worship, Jesus, Jesus, I love you. I just want to touch the hem of that garment. I know I'm not worthy, but if I could touch the hem, I can be healed. If I could touch the hem, I could get saved. If I could touch the hem, I could get delivered. If I could just touch the hem, Lord Jesus, I love you. I need you. Let me touch it, Lord. Let me touch the hem of your garment. I'm not worthy to be touched by you. I'm not worthy to be spoken of or spoken at by you. But if I can just touch the hem, the tassels of of your garment, I know I will be healed. When the worship comes, when the music is worshiping and there's, and there's just a spirit of God here, that's the time to raise our hands, to close our eyes, to imagine heavenly hosts up in heaven praising him, him on his throne and him looking at you worshiping and get through and touch the hem of his garment. That's the time. We have to change our thought processes. We have to change what we think about. We have to change how we believe things. The Bible, man calls it, what is it, uh, our paradigm. Man calls it a paradigm. We have to change that paradigm. That paradigm requires us. That paradigm that we believe requires us to be spoken into, for a prophet to speak over us, for a pastor or a preacher to lay hands on us. A paradigm says that we have to go up to the altar and get anointed. That's our paradigm. But the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says all we have to do is touch the hem of his garment. And the only way we can today touch the hem of our Savior's garment is through prayer and worship. Hallelujah. We need to live our best life for the rest of this year and for the coming years. We have to do it for ourselves and we have to do it for others. If that means every day I press through and I touch the hem and I get what I need for that day, that's what it means. If that means that during the worship service, if nobody else is going to praise and worship with Brother Adam, I'm going to praise and worship with Brother Adam. If that means that I, I need to give my best in worship and in prayer, that's what it, I need to do. I need to live my best life in the following years and in the upcoming days that are coming. I need to always be praising God. I need to always be trusting him. I need to always be worshiping him. I need to always raise my hands and love him. I don't care if there's a bunch of people around. If God does something in my life, I'm going to praise him right there. I don't care if they frown on it or if they look at me funny. I'm going to give him all my love. Hallelujah. We need to give him our best prayer. We need to make this year all about prayer. This year needs to be that we pray and worship God. We need to pray for others. We need to pray, hallelujah, for their blessings. We need to pray regardless of how we feel about them. We need to pray and let us pray, not our knees, but theirs first. Theirs first. If there's somebody despitefully using you, pray for their salvation. Pray for their healing. Pray for their blessing. And let God work it out. And then you can come to him and reach out and touch the hem of his garment and say, okay, now I got what I need. But you pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's all stand. 
There's a need right now for an altar call. There's a need right now for worship and for music. And these altars are open. They're open, not just to be touched and laid hands on, but if you want to kneel down, if you want to kneel at a chair, if you want to kneel in the seat where you're at or you want to kneel at home, the time is right now to reach out and press through and touch the hem of your Savior's garment. The time is right now to get what you need. Don't wait until tomorrow. It may be too late. We're not given tomorrow. Don't wait until an hour from now. We may be taken out as soon as we walk out of this place. Get through to God what you need and pray right now. The altars are open. The altars are open. Come, let us pray. Come, let us seek. Come, let us press through and touch the hem of his garment. Hallelujah. Hello. We want to thank you for watching this segment. We would like to hear more from you. Please follow us and connect with us via social media outlets. We want to offer you an opportunity to partner with us. We can do more together. Below is the information on how you can be part of bringing this message from our community to yours. And before you leave, take our model with you. More compassion, fewer complaints.